Have you ever found it difficult to score in a T20 game? I know I have a number of times, whether it's a bowler bowling a good spell, the wicket doing a little bit, swinging, nipping around, or if I'm struggling to time the ball, it happens, it happens to nearly every batter. Often when I was younger, to get out of this situation, I just tried to hit the ball further and further. Now, for me, look, it might have worked every third or fourth game, but until I actually understood the game and developed a couple of skills and listened to my coach or mentor, uh, it wasn't until then I really capitalised on those good balls, whether that being getting across my crease or playing with soft hands. Um, these were really, really tough times that I didn't really understand the game of cricket and I had to put my ego away for one. I wanted to whack the ball out of the park, but sometimes this wasn't, this only made things dip more difficult. It wasn't until I was about 17, uh, listening to my coach that there were other avenues to score quickly, not just bashing it over the fence. And there are three key points that he told me. In this video, I'm gonna share three key points with you. And it's, it's not all about hitting the ball out of the park. The first key point is scoring runs off good balls. Now, obviously the bowl is hitting a nice hard length and as a batsman, you, you'll probably have to get out of your comfort zone at times, whether that's moving around in your crease or you know, getting right across, closing the face. Generally, you've got gaps either side of the field and to do that, personally, I like to get right back in my crease, which gives me extra time to see the ball. And whether the line of the ball then is, I can tuck off my hip for one or I can run it down to third man. They're generally my two gaps that I look for. But it's all about trying to take the game on and getting out of your comfort zone when you're under the pump against a good spell of fast bowling. So a nice easy drill to do this is, is just set out a couple of cones. So you've got your bowler, and when he's throwing the ball or bowling the ball at you, you just, no matter where it is, you want to try and <clears throat> either hit through one of these three gaps. You'll find if they do bowl a bad ball, you're going to put the bad ball away anyway. Any width, you're going to whack it. That's just general instinct of the game. So every time he's throwing the ball, you're just looking to try and hit through one of the gaps and generally they're the gaps in the game to get you down the other end off strike. And to doing that, you're going to get into your innings, you're going to build momentum and the big shots after you pick up the pace of the wicket will become much easier. So let's have a go. This drill is uh, easier than what it looks. <laughs> so there's one there. And I'm just using my crease getting right back. Two. You're fine, just opening up your hands a little bit always helps. It also softens your hands when you do that as well, allowing you to use the pace. I find as I said before, nice and deep in your crease, give yourself extra time to hit the ball. You'll find it's up higher coming through. If they do bowl a fuller ball, then generally you've already, you've played enough straight drives to hit it back down the ground for a nice single or a strong boundary. Just comes through instinct. As I said earlier, you must play with that good intent to score. Key point number two is running between wickets. No matter how well you're hitting the ball, whether you're whacking them out of the ballpark or you're, playing, or you're scratching around trying to get off strike, you can always control running between wickets. So say you do take the men on in the deep, it's always crucial that you push for the first one hard, first or second one hard. You'll be surprised if you can sneak five runs from those guys in the outfield. If you can sneak five runs there and then on, be on the flip side being a fielding team, save five runs, you've, you've gained 10 runs and you'll be surprised how many games and one are lost in those, inside those 10 runs. So that's, that's a pretty crucial point in my point of view. So it's always a massive ruling. Run the first one hard, don't turn blind, and always communicate with your partner. Game awareness has a lot to do with running between wickets as well. Whether you hit it to the guy's left-hand side, right side, non-dominant arm, weak arm, whatever it is, you've got to have that game awareness to really maximise what's going on in the outfield. So make sure you're always aware of who's throwing the ball in where, whether the teams are backing up or not. It's very important in the game of cricket that you can quite easily steal a run from a single throw over the boundary. And the third key point is power hitting. 
So basically you have to tick off key points one and two first before you can basically reward yourself with the power hitting. A big key for me is obviously you've done the hard work, you've got off strike to the good bowling, uh, you're running hard between wickets, you're stealing singles here and there, so you get the right to actually try and whack something out of the park. And a massive key for me is keeping, keeping nice and still. It doesn't matter if, if you're not hitting them well, at the end of the day you've got to keep your head still and your eyes level. You'll find guys that try and hit the ball 100% end up, you know, mistiming the ball to square leg over cow corner and all that. If you just pull back a little bit and hold your shape, you actually find you might swing a little bit less, but the ball will probably go further. And a lot of batsmen say this uh, around because the bats are so good these days. You've got to trust the instinct of, of your training that you don't have to hit the ball 100% just, just to hit it over the ropes. So my mindset of advanced batting in uh, the 2020 format, uh, as I said, I widened my stance, but a main thing is I've always, I'm still looking to hit straight no matter the length of the ball. I'm still trying to go there. I think it's important that you always try and think to hit straight to utilise the full face of the bat. The moment they do get a little bit straighter or a little bit shorter, that's when you, you've got to hang on as tight as possible, then you slowly open up to utilise the cow corner square leg. But my first thoughts are always going straight. A massive key is keeping the head still. Even though, even though your arm speed's coming through and you're extending, it's important to keep your head still. The moment they get a bit straighter, that's when you slowly open up. But if you open up too early with your shoulders, then you find yourself hitting across the line. Um, and obviously you can't access straight then if it is fuller. So try and hang on, keep side on as much as possible. I'm not so much worried about your foot movement here. As I said, the most important thing is keeping your head still. So just to go over those three points again, we've got scoring runs off good balls, we've got running hard between the wickets, and then we've got our power hitting. To do all this, you've got to have good intent. And by intent, I mean being busy at the crease, you do that, you're looking to score runs. Every avenue where you're trying to do, you'll improve. You'll be surprised how much your strike rate goes up without you even knowing it at the end of the day if you just tick off these little boxes rather than thinking, dot ball, dot ball, dot ball, boundary, dot ball, boundary. If you just work in between those balls, you'll be surprised how it adds up and how easier you pick up the game. Another point is, besides all that, make sure you take a step back and control the game as a batsman. This is your space. Take a few deep breaths and make sure you control the game. So that wraps up video number one. I hope you took a lot out of it, guys. Um, make sure you keep an eye out for video number two. It's going to be all about bowlers, how to stop an attacking batsman, um, and it's going to be good fun. Just before we go, I'd love to hear your feedback. What did you learn out of this, and how's it going to improve your game? Thanks again, guys, and if you've got a question, feel free to ask, and I'd love to get back to you as soon as possible.